Hi, thanks so much for spending time watching this uh, video. Uh, this video is, uh, I would call it a remix of a webinar we held on the 10th of June, the year 2020. Uh, 2020. And the webinar is on the subject of what we call uh, the first stakeholder engagement workshop on the assessment automation system. I think some of you already are aware we are going to uh, invest a lot of money uh, to automate the assessment process now conducted by uh, Beam Society Limited. So my name is CSO. I'm the general manager of the BSL, that is the Beam Society Limited. And today I'm I like to go through with you uh, some of the, uh, the 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 concept, the design, and so on of the automated system. And my objective is very simple. I try to actually give you a briefing of what we are going to do. And I also try to tell you how this solution could address many of your concerns as regarding the BIM assessment at the moment. And finally, I would like to actually arouse your interest and also I will invite you to join our focus group, join our future sales engagement so that we can act, act, have more information and more comments and more importantly, more contribution from you to make sure the system that we build is something that actually you like and it is very user friendly to you. Okay, now I go on to tell you a bit more about the system. Now this is a rundown of the workshop which is actually held on the, the 10th of June. Uh, first of all, I will give you introductions of the future assessment system now being conceived by the BIM Society. And then I will give you a sort of macro wheel, the high level uh, design of the system and based upon which I hope you can see that we can really address your concern and solve most if not all of your problems. And finally I'll give you a little bit of demonstrations, a little bit of screen fall to show you what it looks like in the future. Of course the one I'm going to demo to you is not the final product. I just give you some sort of conceptual idea. So apart from giving you some sort of elaboration in words, I want to give you some idea of what is the screen for and so on. And finally, of course, uh, during the workshop, we have the Q&A. But today, uh, we don't have the real-time Q&A. But after you watch this video, in case you have any questions, any comments and so on, no problem. You can still approach us by whatever means. You can call us, you can write to us, email or whatever. So you can raise your questions, comments and so on. And then we are going to consolidate all the views and comments and then we give the answer. So you have a list of Q&A in future. Regardless who asks the question, everybody will see the same Q&A returned by us to all of you. Okay, let me go on. Now first of all, I'll give you introductions of <coughs> our future assessment system. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, of course, the first question to ask is why we want to automate the system and why we actually invest a lot of money into building this what we call the automated system. Because, answer is very simple, because we heard over the years a lot of comments from the industry. The first comments of course is say the long assessment period. Now, I, I still remember when I joined this company a couple of years ago, at that po point in time, the assessment cycle and on my on my side could take about 90 days, 90 calendar days. So about one or two years ago, we already sorted it from 90 to 45 working days. So it cut it by actually half, but we are not satisfied. We want to cut it further. So we actually hear your voice and hear your view clear and loud. So we are going to shorten the assessment process, even though we are already compressed it by 50%. Another comments by the industry, by all of you is about the submission process. Uh, no doubt, I, I'm, it's no room for complacency, but I think our system integrity is very good. But to most of you, you will see number one, the system simply a little bit cumbersome, and number two is rather primitive. Primitive in the sense that we do not make use of the IT technologies too much. We mainly use the system as, as a sort of visual aid for us to view your submission, that's all. And we do not use the system anything further from that. So it's purely based upon actually manual labor to do the assessment whether it is by the secretariat or also by the company uh, members and so on. So this is something we want to address. And the third point is about the inconsistency of ruling. And I must use this opportunity 
actually to clarify and also to explain. In actual fact, our results are quite consistent, but they may not be perceived as consistent enough. One of the reasons because uh, people complain uh, the, the project going through our system and then a lot of people comment on that and then you finally get the result. But how we get the result may not be that transparent to you and because of that you may you just see the result. And when you compare the result of project A submitted by you and then project B submitted by you as well, when you just compare about the result, you may come to a perception it seems not consistent. But I want to assure you one thing. Actually, during the process, the deliberation process, and the reference and so on, they are highly consistent. But of course, there are always room for all improvement. We want to make it actually more consistent at the end. And also, we want to make, not just by perception is consistent, consistent, but in actual fact, you can see that it is so consistent. And the, later, you will see how we resolve this. But I suffice at the moment to say that, well, we have been quite consistent. And perhaps I'll just take one or two minutes to elaborate further on this. Whenever you put your project in front of the committee member for the deliberations, my staff actually they go through the archive, go through the files to dig out something which is actually relevant to your case. And we make use of what we call the precedent case and what decision we made in the past regarding some sort of similar sort of scenario. And we just don't make, I mean, we do not make reference to just one single project, but rather we make reference to multiple projects. So in front of the committee members, they see not just your submission, your argument, and not just an argument of the BAS or my staff, but also they have chance to look at the actual precedents and what kind of decision they make in the past before they make the decisions. Uh, so in other words, the process itself is actually quite consistent. But understandably, you know that even you have actually two cases and you have two set of consistent rules, but once you put the facts under the rule, the result could be different. So in other words, the industry may perceive it to be inconsistent. Of course, I say there is still room for improvement, but later you will see how the system can act, make sure that the consistency can be sort of, I would say, remarkably improved. And the fourth point mentioned by you is about the unpredictability of the assessment result. So when you prepare your project, your submittal for submission, in your mind, you already make some sort of self-assessment. You make some sort of calculation here and there. And then you say, okay, I'm going to target to achieve 78, for example. But at the end of the day, after the assessment, you get only 68. So in other words, you, you want to actually make the result more, I would say, close to what you target. But you do not know because you do not actually see through the entire system. Again, later today, I hope after you see the video and see our solution and you have confidence that in future you can actually uh, make the whole thing more predictable. Uh, finally, actually, for this is not the final comments by the industry, but today we do not have time, the kind of luxuries to go through all your problems. So we try to single out you know, those important, I would say, most significant sort of comments and criticism from you, and we try to actually address that uh, within the next, say, 15 minutes or so. So the last one on the screen is a lack of dialogue, because most of you, when the project, uh, when you're, you're not actually quite aware what is going on after you submit your project. So people sometimes complain there's no transparency. But in actual fact, we are totally transparent. I dare to say there's no other perhaps, uh, just a few, if any, and perhaps no, the other assessor you know, in the same industry. They use such an open system. Remember, we used the uh, industrial practitioner, for example, some consultant engineer as our assessor. So they are not our staff, but rather, so to speak, our service vendor and all actually the assessments of committee and all the standards of committee members, they are actually drawn from the industry. So it's a totally transparent. But what is not transparent to you perhaps is because you have no chance to sit with, in the same room to argue with the BAS and argue with the, for example, the, uh, the adjudicating panel, the expert panels and the assessments of committees and so on. So because of that kind of lacking of direct dialogue that actually leads you to believe no, that is something perhaps not transparent enough. So in future, because we have the IT system now, 
we can make that kind of direct dialogue between you and the BS and even with the uh, committee members and so on, the communication will be even more direct. So the system is going to do that. Okay, I always say, uh, uh, I, I, will, I will always say, we, 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 if you want to do something, we always need four things. The first one is the raw material. Well, the raw material must be right. The second thing is our city methodologies, how you do the thing, all right? And then, of course, we have to use the people to do that sort of thing. And then finally, you have some sort of, I would say, A and so on, and to enable you to complete the job. Now, in the past, actually, even nowadays, we are using mainly you know, that kind of, I would say, a labor system to do it. So what is in front of you now is what we propose is an IBM system, which is an automated system. And we try to improve, the te the, I would say, using a technology to improve the methodologies to do the assessment. And with this system, we believe we are going to achieve a number of objectives. The first objective, we want to make the whole thing more, more user-friendly and also more user-centered. That's to say we build a system, we design the system with you in our mind. At the end of the day, what we want is actually you being the user is the one who have the final say and tell us whether the system has been built and designed in a way which is most compatible to your need. So you are the one who is going to make the final say. And also at this moment, we always try to solicit your help by participating in this sort of student engagement workshop and also actually give us comments and so on to make sure we know what you want. So we want to make the system at the end of the day very user-friendly and also user-centered. The second objective is of course consistency. That is actually what you want to. Now, you can see that we have the IBIM system, but I think you are also aware we already have what we call the E4. So I hope you can actually spend some time, go to our website to download the set of E4 we already developed for the entire 1.2, the version 1.2 MB system, uh, the two is already there. So download it. Because as I mentioned just now, if you want to do something good, you have to make sure you have what? The right methodology and the right raw material and also the right media. So the right media, AS1, is an e-form. So the e-form is something that actually convey your submittal, convey your submittal. So we try to use standardized sort of submittal by using what we call the e-form, which actually marriage with the IBM to complete the whole process so that we can achieve that kind of objective. That's to say user friendly, user centered and consistent. And so standardization is one of our objective. And the third thing is the collaborative. Uh, I mentioned just now, once you submit the projects, you can actually maintain dialogue with my staff through phone and so on, but you have no actually direct collaboration with the beam assessor. And likewise, you have no direct dialogue and collaboration with the assessments of committee members and so on. But now through the system, we want to improve the collaboration between all the parties so that we have a really effective sort of dialogue between all the parties before we come down to the final decision as regarding whether the credit should be granted for what you claim or not. And finally, which is the least, last but not the least, is the transparency. Now, transparency is good in the sense that it gives you transparency. Why? Because we want to see through the whole transmit, uh, the assessment process. You also want to make sure you check out where your project is going through and what kind of workstation is going through and so on. So we try to give you the system so that you can press a button, go to the screen, and then you know where your project is. So what is the status of the project and so on. And likewise, we want to make sure the management and also, for example, the regulator, just like ICAC, they actually have some sort of, I would say, wheel on our system. So in future, you can see that the system will be totally transparent all the information dialogue properly uh, recorded and archived so any so the people who are actually authorized can always go to the system to look at the particular piece of information so we make it transparent and the transparent also bring for what we call uh, the benefit of integrity and also make you the ease of mind because by having transparency you know where your project is now what kind of information you need to supply and then what is the decision and so on. So this actually is all coming from the transparency. Now this system is going to build on the cloud, it's a cloud base. 
And why using cloud based? Very simple, because we want to make sure the system is actually available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. So if you build a system on our server, the chances occasionally we may need to have some sort of electrical, uh, electrical supply outage for maintenance and so on, the server will be put out. And sometimes because of some sort of fault in the system, again the system could be put out. And also, uh, at the moment, whenever you want to do any submissions and so on, you have to come forward to our office and then file with us the data or give us a link for us to download the files and so on. Number one is take time. Number two is sometimes require you to come over physically to our office because our office is not 24 hours open, right? So, therefore, we think the best solution is not to put something in our office, but rather to put it in the cloud. And also, the cloud technology is nowadays very mature. Uh, they give you a lot of facility and also I would say scalability. The scalability can also be achieved by the uh, cloud based sort of solution. Okay, just as I already mentioned, uh, what we are going to propose to you is we are going to use an IBM system, which is actually later you will see that it is a sort of workflow system, and pass the e-form, which is a highly standardized, standardized and also digitized sort of electronic forms for you to carry your submittal and your information. By marrying the two, I think we can achieve the result which actually address 99% of your concern. And first of all, let me tell you about the e form. Uh, what does it mean? Uh, I always say our, our assessment process is everything based. Let's just say we have the manual and then you have the projects. And then you look at the manual and you try to claim that particular credits. And in order to actually enable us to design whether you can get the credit or not, will require you to submit some sort of information, which I call the evidence. So you give us the evidence, the evidence will actually back you up. It will support you that certain requirements are met. And we based upon your evidence, we look at that. So we have a trust system that will say we trust that your evidence is correct. Unless, you know, sometimes something so obvious. In the past, it happens, it happens. That will say we look at some piece of information. When you put it together on the table, it simply does not make sense. That's to say we know that something goes wrong. Of course, we have no reason to, to, to actually doubt about the integrity. But you know human error uh, could be actually creep in from time to time. So make the information actually not consistent. So based upon that, we are going to ask the question. But if the, if the information is consistent, makes sense and so on, then we just assess your project based upon the evidence submitted by you. Therefore, we call it evidence based. Now we are going to use the e-form to carry your evidence. At the moment, I think some of you had that kind of concern. The concern about the, the, the extent of information, the extent of the evidence, and the volume of information and evidence that you are required to submit to support your claim. Now admittedly, sometimes because uh, some of the BS, they could be have some sort of what I call the eagle eyes. When they look at some sort of thing, they actually start to say, well, look at this and that and so on. I need some more information. Now, some BAS, understandably, they perhaps because of their experience or be, because of they have that kind of judgment, professional judgment, they say, well, look at that piece of evidence, even though it's not 100% crystal clear, but I tend to believe they can actually get the credit. So they do not ask the questions. So the assessor A may ask some question, assessor B may not ask the question. So this is undesirable. So what we try to do is through the e-form, we actually standardize your submittal. Standardize submittal. I always draw the analogy between the e-form and so the, that kind of, I would say in Chinese term, dim sum ji. That would say that when you go to the Chinese restaurant, you want to eat dim sum and they give you a, a piece of paper and then there are different sort of, I would say, recipe there and different sort of dim sum and then you just take uh, which one you want. So the e form in future, just the same thing. So look at a certain credit, for example, SA2, right? So there are some sort of requirements. And then in order to claim for that kind of credit, then you need to actually take note, this is the box I want to claim. This is a credit I want to claim. But we then expect you to give you uh, give us some sort of evidence to su support your claim. So this is on the second layer, second layer. Now we're going to actually pre-define. We define clearly. What kind of information required? I always call it something like a raw material as a primary data. So we ask for primary data. Now somehow the primary data needs some sort of calculation to produce the secondary data, secondary, secondary information. 
and we actually give the credit or not based upon actually the secondary and primary information together and then actually we decide whether the credit is actually uh, can be granted or not so in the past we give you some sort of freedom about your submittal you just based on your interpretation of the credit requirement and then you make your actual submittal but now in future once we use the e4 we actually predefine you know, the top layer that will say the checklist the checklist and then the second layer is of course the uh, evidence that actually correlated with the, what the item you take in the checklist and so on so no matter who is the BAS who are the members or who are the members of expert panel looking at the submittal they based upon just one single standardized set of e form and the e form already defined the boundary the boundary of the information and evidence we are going to ask you to submit and only when the information is actually defined in the e form we will ask you to submit anything outside we will not ask for it and on the contrary if you want to claim something if the e form asks for that information if that information is not submitted of course we will re reject that to say we will actually challenge you that to say uh, that kind of submittal is not sufficient in terms of either completeness or in terms of our city context adequate to support your claim about the credits so that is the function of the e form so we standardize e form it is actually the carrier of the evidence and we also clearly define all the submittal through the e form so by the e form we already solve many of your problems about the consistency about the degree of details you need to submit, submit and so on and so forth so that is the e form but that is not the end and the system is going to actually give you something more than the e form we are going to build i would say the flow engine the workflow engine which is the ibeam which i'm going to introduce to you now ibeam is what ibeam means we are going to have some sort of clearly defined workflow now, for some of you who are experienced dealing with IT project development and so on, and many people were talking about transaction processing, what we call TP, and also about workflow engine and so on. Now, you can see that I split the work, workflow into two work, and I explain to you why. Now, look at our assessment process and also the projects we are actually, con actually conducting. We have NB, we have EB, we have BI. Now you know that the assessment process, that's the workflow, is not exactly the same. So if I build the system with some sort of predefined, sort of, I would say, rigid sort of workflow, then when you actually have any change about the process, then we have to actually revamp the whole system, which is undesirable. Undesirable to you, undesirable to us. So what I'm going to design, actually going to actually propose to all of you and build for all of you is I would say just a workflow system and the workflow system of course with the well-defined sort of process and later I'm going to use diagram to explain about the concept clearly but at the moment you just remember we are going to what we call the predefined well-defined assessment process and the beauty about this is it will give you predictability predictability regarding you know, how the process is going through but at the same time when it's well-defined I can also achieve what we call the flexibility of the flow and also adaptability. So at the end of the day, you can see that we can have a multiple number of workflows. Now I use a single word, workflows. Right? I will workflows through the same platform, the IB. So let me explain to you diagrammatically. So I use that kind of diagram to il illustrate the concept. I, I, you know that when we build the workflow system normally we try to build what we call the workstation the stages of work I draw the analogy of using the railway if we have a new town we try to build the railway along the new town so they go through station A, station B, station C, station D in a very rigid manner so even you have no interest to go to B but I'm so sorry before you go to station D you need to go through B and C and so on so that is that kind of, I would say, railroad system. So what we are going to build is not a railroad system, even not a highway system, but rather we are going to build the whole thing in a lake, on the water. In other words, there are unlimited number of possible routes to going through the whole park. I always call it what we call the Disneyland Park, but this is the i beam Park. In the i beam Park, you can see that there are many islands, many islands. So what happened? 
uh, when you go to this system, it's like this. So first of all, you come over to the entrance. You do the project registration. After you are done with the project registration, you pay the money, of course, and then I give you a ticket. At the same time, I give you the e-forms. I give you a set of e-forms based upon what you want to achieve. For example, I'm going to aim at platinum. So I give you a full set of that kind of e-form from SA, WU, whatever, right? Which is relevant to you. So you get a set of e-form in your hands. At the same time, I look at what kind of process is applicable to you. If you are using, for example, the NB2, then of course you go through the PA and then the FA, right? But even for PA, you have some sort of project have multiple PA, but some project just a single stage of PA. And also remember, sometimes you want to fast track the consent letter seeking process. So to say you want to actually commence your site uh, building as soon as possible, the construction process as soon as possible. So instead of waiting for the whole project to undergo the PA system, it takes time, of course, and also takes a lot of submittal, Right now, you can actually opt to raise your hand by asking me to send you a helicopter, which I call this two-stage assessment. So by sending your helicopters, we just actually take just nine credits and take it out from the whole bundle of your submissions. And then we conduct a very quick assessment on those nine credits only. All right? And then once you got it, we give you the result. And with that result, you can now go to BD and then get the consent letter and then you can commence the construction work. While the majority of those credits, which had not been assessed, they will go through the system. So in other words, you can see that the applicant A differ from the applicant B and differ from the applicant C, not just in terms, for example, about the tool it's going to use. For example, the A may use the MB, B may actually use the EB, and C may use a BI. But even A, B, C are using MB. Some may like to go through the two-stage process. Some may actually take just the, uh, I would say, the unclassified grading. And some may actually obviate the, uh, the PA and go to FA directly. Actually, we allow, even though we do not encourage. So in other words, different visitors to this, I would say, i -beam park, they have different ideas as regarding how far they want to go and how many stations they want to go. Therefore, apart from giving you a set of e-form, I also give you a well-defined route of assessment. So to say the, the routing table, I give you itinerary. So if I draw the analogy, if I may, using the this land. So you bring your children to this land, you may say, well, today we come to this land just for half a day. We do not have sufficient time to go through all the actually uh, games and so on. So you talk to your children, what about John? You go to say the, uh, uh, the, the, the game A, game C, and game D. And your girl oh, actually may like to go through the, the, another set of games. So in other words, you are going to tell them uh, to go along different routes. So likewise, in our system, in future, you can see that apart from giving you a set of e-form, you're going to hold your e-form going through the assessment process. In each process, you have that kind of stem collection until at the end of the day you get all the stem and then you get the final credit you want. In our system, we also, apart from e-form, I give you itinerary. The set of itinerary shows you the station you need to go through. For example, if you have two stages, I say you go to stage one, the helicopter will actually take away the nine boxes of information and do the assessment so that you can get the consent letter as soon as possible. And the rest will go through the, 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 the path. So you can see that. I, I build all the processes, all the processes within this I-beam park. So once you go in the beam park, the first station, for example, you go for process A, and after you go for process A, and some project will jump to, for example, the process D and project Z, uh, C and D and F, and then going out of the, of the, of the park. But some may go through more processes, and some may go through less pro number of processes. So it is sort of flexible. Therefore, as I mentioned just now, we can actually build a comprehensive sort of processes together, but at the same time allow the flexibility for the user and also for the secretariat to agree with you about that kind of route. Of course, we have some standardized route. Let's just say when you go to this land, they have some sort of standard package, standard menu. So if you pay $300, you're going to pay, for example, three games or four games, you just buy that kind of, I would say, tickets. 
and Vitek Kano itinerary. And then we give you the standard itinerary. We do have that kind of standard itinerary. But we also give you a flexibility. For example, some people would like to go through the bespoke. The bespoke is a process, isn't it? So we give you a bespoke process so that you can actually uh, uh, actually go for one more step, what we call the bespoke process. So here's a summary. There's a summary. So once you go to the entrance, so you do the budget restoration, so you get a set of D form, and also you get some sort of itinerary, and then based upon the itinerary, based upon the E form, and then you go through process by process, which is relevant to your projects until you go to the exit. Once you go to the exit, you get a report, and also now we are interfacing with the Hong Kong GBC, and then you get the certificates. So this is, I would say, uh, some sort of very simple diagrammatic elaboration of what the system will be. Let's just say what the IBM system will be in future. All right, so you can see that uh, our solution will actually give you a lot of benefits. And the first one is the mentioned is cloud-based, therefore it is sort of available in all seasons, seven times 24 hours. So 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 365 days for the whole year. And also we had the agreement with the uh, Microsoft Azure. They're going to give us some sort of reliability guarantee, which is 99.9%. In actual fact, it's more than that. But uh, we try to pay safe. You know? As at least, it is 99.9%. So virtually, we talk about 100% reliability already. In any case, it's much more reliable than having the system built on our own server, in our office anyway. And also, we have the 100% standardized e form. So that will eliminate about the consistency about the submittal. Consistent about the submittal. We also enhance communication. Later, I will show you how we can actually enhance the communication. So the, in future, you can see that we have direct dialogue between all the parties through the collaboration platform. And also, you have the real time sort of uh, understanding and also the monitoring of the status of all your projects and also about the information. So where your project is, let's just say within the iPark, the iBeam Park, where is your particular form? So whether it's on island A or island B and so on. And also we guarantee one thing, uh, this is exactly our, our wish. We, we understand how busy you are. When you are doing a project, you already get to produce a lot of information, make reference to a lot of information. Now, sometimes it's rather irritating. When you do A, you peel in some sort of form, you open up your chairs, you open up your the computer, you find the data field in the forms. Now, when you deal with another organization, and then you fill in another forms, now repeat the whole process. So what we try to achieve is all the information that you enter into the system, you just enter it once, and it can be used always. That's to say, you don't need to repeat the entry of the same piece of information here and there. For example, once you enter the information through the Hong Kong GPC registration system, so you fill in the fact sheet, and that fact sheet information will be automatically transported into our system without you doing anything. Of course, you say, currently you are doing more or less the same, you know, without your knowledge, yes. But currently, it is actually by labor, by actually manual process to actually extract the data and then we enter into our system. But in future, once you do it, the interface will bring the data and then transfer data automatically into our system. So once you log on your system, it's something so familiar. You get all the information already. And then you fill in more. So once you fill in this piece of information in this particular table, if this information is also required elsewhere, the system will actually copy it to elsewhere for you. So the information data will be synchronized. And with that, of course, the whole thing will become more effective and more efficient. And, of course, the system will become more transparent. As I say, every time, any time, you just log in the system, you know where your project is, what kind of information being asked for, what information you have already submit, submitted, what are the views of other people, and so on. So everything is transparent, and everything is documented, and keep in the system, and so on. And so the transparency also help us to make the system, I would say, more robust in terms of the system integrity. So system will be, I would say, more safe, more robust. Now remember, what BIM Society is now doing is a public function. A public function in the sense that we are actually not doing this as a sort of business, but rather as, I would say, the public service. 
So we are trying to do something, perhaps, all right, to save the trouble of BD to reassess about the green merits about your design. So once you get our result, it very much like a laboratory, we test your product, and then we use your certificate, and then we pass it to you, and then with that certificate, you go to BD, and where I think everybody knows, you try to get the consent for commencing on construction work, and more importantly, you want to get, for example, the GFA concessions. So in other words, it is a public function. So we are doing a public function. Therefore, we must make sure the project integrity is at a very high level. And I think you know that we are public body. Uh, you look at the POBO, the Prevention Bible Ordinance. You go to Schedule 1 and 2, you find the name of the BIM Society there. So we are actually public servant. We are very close to civil servant in terms of, I would say, the, the, uh, the, the control by ICC on our process. So we, are, we, we, we need to actually accountable not just to you, not just to building department, but also to ICEC as regarding the integrity and robustness of our system. So we want to make it, I would say, robust enough for all that purpose. Okay, so with the I-beam plus the E-form together, so we add the two things together. Now we achieve that kind of result. We, got, we achieve user-friendly lens, we achieve the user-centered sort of system design, we are also user-focused, and finally, of course, most important is you as a user, you feel satisfied when you use the system. All right, how we do it? Now, uh, perhaps just now I forgot to mention <coughs> about the timeline. Uh, from now, it's uh, June, the year 2020. We target to complete and roll out the system in the first and second, actually the second quarter, the beginning of the second quarter of the year 2021. So from now up to the time when the system is rolled out for you to use, we are talking about just about 10 months. And what I'm, the money we invest in this system is over 20 billion. It is one of the biggest invest, I would say, just the only biggest investment of the BIM Society in, I would say, enhancing our uh, assessment process for the benefit of everybody, which of course, including you as a main, I would say, stakeholder in our mind. So it is unprecedented in short for an IT project like this, unprecedented result. And the system, I would say, uh, is now undergoing, I would say, very aggressive sort of um, project management control. And we know that using the conventional approach, uh, what we call the waterfall model, we have, we have no chance at all to complete you know, that kind of complicated projects within 10 months or 11 months, no chance at all. So therefore, we use the agile system. And some of you, I think, are, are quite familiar with IT development, but some of you may not. So may I actually take about one minute to elaborate the difference between the conventional model and also the new methodology we are going to use. Uh, we used to build system by dividing the number of stages, what we call the waterfall model. So first stage, we actually ask for user requirement, asking you what kind of thing you want and how system flow should be and what kind of, I would say, screen flow should be and so on. So we ask the user, to find the user requirement. After we get the user requirement, and then we go through the second stage, and then we try to work out what we call the functional span. What kind of function is going to be provided by the system? And then with the system, so what kind of system could deliver that kind of function to satisfy that kind of user requirements? And finally, of course, we have the product specification, and then the tender, and so on. So you can imagine it takes quite a while before you eventually go to the tendering stage. Of course, in our case, it's a totally inappropriate. We do not have that kind of luxury of time. We want to improve our system quickly for everybody's benefits. So we actually use the most updated sort of methodology. Now used in the IT uh, industry and also in other industries. For example, in making uh, that kind of cell phone and so on. Because the life cycle of product becomes shorter and shorter. And the system developer and the market just cannot wait for such a long period of development. Remember, once you get all the requirements settled down and then you use the tender and so on, it could be more than a year. Of course, many requirements have changed already due to the external factor. So in other words, that kind of cycle, that kind of, I would say, methodology is not suitable. Therefore, use the Agile. Now I explain to you the benefit of the Agile and then why it can get that, get that kind of benefits. The Agile is equal to what we call improved quality. We can use Agile methodology to develop our IT system with, I would say, improved quality. We can actually give you more business value. I told my staff, uh, also in future when I discuss to you about the process, every time I look at all the segments of the process, we always ask ourselves, 
what kind of value what is the value given by that particular process uh, if give no value to any stakeholders then that process or that procedure could be actually uh, erased because it, it actually give you give us no value so we are actually value oriented so all the steps must carry some sort of value remember what i told you about the e-form right why we have the e-form like this why we want to have the checklist why we want to have the secondary data and so on because it gets some sort of value the value is is increase the value of your evidence to actually to convince the adjudicator that the credits could be granted so it carries a value and likewise in future when we ask the bs to give you a, some sort of i would say advice and some sort of uh, uh, say the query and so on again it's increase the value the value is we make sure the final assessment result is something that the project is I was that actually really deserved for that kind of credit. So we, we, we try to use a value you know, as a base to design what kind of process we want to actually build in. Just now I mentioned already we are going to use a focus that is you is are our focus. Your interest is is our actual our interest. We are also try to engage the sales as soon as possible. This is exactly why we have that kind of sales engagement you know, held on the, the 10th of June and some more will be held uh, down the road. I hope you have chance and try to squeeze time to attend our state engagement uh, quorum to tell us what you want. And we want to achieve transparency, which is again can be assured by Agile. And more importantly, Agile will give you, I would say, a more early and predictable deliverable at the end of the day. So instead of using three or four years or 22 years, we are trying to compress a whole development cycle within about a year. And also, Agile will give us a better assurance regarding cost control and time control. And finally, this again very important, is allow changes uh, during the whole courses. I, I always say, uh, uh, draw the analogy, like uh, someone, you know, some uh, uh, TV operator, the TV station operator, they, they, they actually uh, produce movie, right? In the older day, of course, they actually write the whole story and also all the script before they start the production process. But now you know some of them does not uh, some of them do not do this. They actually watch the feedback from the audience, from the, the customer, as regarding the drama, you know, what kind of script you know, they should produce. So now it makes rather real time and also just like something like design and build. So likewise, because we use the agile which allows us to actually monitor the needs, monitor some sort of I would say requirement from user and so on. So even during quite a late stage, we can always um, make some sort of, I would say, uh, changes to incorporate the user requirement, which only surface at the later stage. How we can do it in the next slide, we're going to show you how we do it. In the older days, in the old model, they actually design the whole thing, the whole thing, the whole system, the whole system, and then they do it you know, within the development stage. But now we break the whole thing into a number of modules. And each time we just use one module. In actual fact, we what we call the time box. Each time box only about last, lasting for about three weeks. So we have the three weeks time span, and then we take out one segment of the system, and then we build it. And once we build it, we put it there, and then we build another one, put it there. So in other words, during the later stage, if some change need to be made, we can always try to actually built within that kind of subsequent segment. And if times allow, money allows, of course, we can actually go back to actually revamp you know, some of that kind of segment. Of course, we have some very strange, uh, strict change control. If you do not actually control the change at the later stage, then the whole project will sort of stay. And it's exactly why I want you to give us your comments and your views and even your criticism as early as possible so that you can always catch the last change before it's too late okay you look at the right hand side now this is how we break up the whole ibm system at the middle this is the vertebrae of the system the vertebrae you know, the central core of the system you can see that the most important one of course the document submission module this is the one allows you to submit your submittal and then we can actually do the assessment so this is the most important one and also it includes also the flow from the start until the, the end 
Now, during the course of COVID, we have online communication module. So we have online communication between all the parties, between applicants, between your team members, and my secretarial staff, the BAS, and the expert panels, and also the assessment committees, members, and so on. So we have online communication and between the party, sometimes just between three parties, sometimes between four parties, and so on. And also the workflow approval process. Your system go through each of the island, as I mentioned in our part. So when you go through the island, you try to collect the stamp. So once you get the chop stamp, that you say approve, 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 and eventually you get a whole lot of results in the portfolio. All the forms being approved with the stamp and those by the committee and so on, now you get the result. So the central one is a core, is a vertebrae. Now on the right hand side is a reporting module. This is important of course. At the end of the day, you really want to have a look about the detailed reporting about your project, the appraisal report and so on. Now at the moment, the report is actually produced by hands, quite manually, by my staff. They based upon the information they collect during the middle, you know, the middle the, throughout the whole courses, and then try to pick information and then they become the writer, the technical writer, to write the report. This is undesirable for a number of things. Number one is inefficient, and number two, uh, some sort of manual and manipulation will actually change the meaning. All right? This is something we want to avoid. We want to have what I call verbatim. The verbatim. This will say the actually the true message which is recorded during the course assessment. This is something we want to achieve. So in future, with that kind of reporting module, we can actually produce that kind of report rather automatically and also carry the verbatim information at the end of the day. Now, even without the reporting module, of course, as I mentioned uh, during uh, just uh, the, the talk I, I told you, uh, during the, the, the course of the, of the process, during the course assessment, you can always have some sort of real-time inquiry regarding your projects and so on. So it is actually real-time query real. But this one is actually something we produce in, in a sort of report. You know, it actually can be printed, become a hard copy and so on. Now one thing is about the BAS assignment module, which uh, I think may not be too concerned to you if you are Africa, but is rather actually a big concern number one to the BAS and also to us and actually in a subtle way very important to you. As I mentioned just now, some BAS know they have an eagle eyes and some are sort of because of experience as mentioned when they look at something they know that you achieve it or not and so on. So in other words, uh, the, the BAS actually could actually affect you know the progress of your project. So we try to make it fair by actually randomize by randomizing the selection and appointment of BAS. At the moment, it's done by I would say one of my staff. But she actually based upon the complete actually regulated process and she have no discretion at all. Just follow the step step by step. So we actually have a project coming out. We call the actually an email the uh, potential uh, BS and asking them whether they have time to do it or not. We will not divulge. We will not actually disclose about the identity of the project nor we will actually disclose about uh, the, the, the scale of the project and so on. Nothing. We just tell, ask them, do you have time in the next couple of weeks to do a project for us? Well, they say yes, and then we pass it to them. So in other words, it is completely, I would say, randomized, sort of allocation and assignment to make sure the system integrity is there and also fair to all the applicants. And I, I think it's understandably something I would say very concerned by the ICAC when they check upon our system to make sure that there's no human sort of interference about this. And in future, it's totally automated. This is a one the project emerge, then the project will actually trigger the BS assignment system. The BS assignment system will look at what kind of BS required, and then go to the pool based upon some predetermined randomized sort of allocation mechanism, and then pick the BS, and then actually pack it to the project if the BS agree to do it. All right, this is the finance module. Uh, this one actually cover the, for example, the, the payment. So once you register with us, you have to go to the entrance of the park, remember, and then you pay the money, we use the ticket to you. So at the moment, we use a contract to you, and then we charge you the money by invoicing you, and then you pay us. So all together, this is, say, uh, the, the, uh, this, all the module work together, that is what we call the IBM system. Now let me uh, spend a little bit of time going through with you the high-level design of the system. I'm going to sort of quick because I think some of the detail um, is not, I would say, uh, do not require to be covered in detail at this moment. 
and we are going to cover in more detail in the future still the engagement. First of all, look at the, the top level design. As mentioned earlier, we are going to uh, build a cloud-based system and we already picked the Microsoft Azure, which is one of the biggest uh, uh, cloud uh, service vendor in the world. Now, apart from Microsoft, you, you know that they are what we call Amazon and so on and so forth, right? But now we use a micro, Microsoft Azure. You know, so you belong to the public board at the left-hand side. So uh, you are going to get the e-form and then you do the document submissions and so on. And then you're going to use the online communication to communicate with my staff and also with the uh, important key person throughout the assessment process. We also have a knowledge database and later I will show you just a one or two slides. Now, what does it mean? And uh, we have also system interfacing uh, we, with other parties. For example, as I mentioned just now, the Hong Kong GBC. Once you do and complete the registration, you already fill in some sort of information on the fact sheet. And that fact sheet is going to be transported into our system. So we are going to build the interfacing system. In future, there could be other interfaces as well. Uh, you know that when the system grow and grow and so on, what will be growing? The data. We're going to capture all the information within the cloud. And in future, each piece of information will have a unique identity. Unique identity. So whenever we want to make use of big data to do some sort of research and also analysis, we can always go to the system asking for specific data. And then we have a portfolio data for us to do the R&D. And I do not rule out that in future we may have some sort of interfacing and I would say exchange of data uh, with other party. Of course, uh, the, the data security will 100% be preserved. Don't worry about that. We are just interested in academic research, nothing more. And on the right hand side is my staff, the BSL, right, which represents, for example, my staff is handling the e flow control, the traffic control, and also conducting the communication, produce a report, and charge of money. And more importantly, it's a knowledge database, uh, sort of maintenance and creation. Now, in future, after the project going through the system, of course, we produce a report. This is one of the very important deliverables. But there are some deliverables, it could be even more important in the long run which is the knowledge. Because every time when we conduct the assessment, we make use of the past president. We look at the, the manual. I always say the manual is equivalent to something like, I say, is a written law. Uh, you know that, some people will know about my background. So apart from practice engineering, I'm also a lawyer. So I try to borrow some good concept from the legal uh, industry into our, our industry. So you look at the law. There's some law that we call the statute, which is what we call that kind of written law. It's something you can go to the Hong Kong Law Library, that's uh, chapter one, chapter two, and you got the law. And number two is about the precedent. That's what we say the authority decided during each of the case going through the law court. So the judge will make some sort of ruling. This is what we call the racial decedenda. So in future, we are going to actually store all those sort of reason of decisions into the system. So by having a rich library of that kind of precedents and also the ruling given in the past, we can make our assessment and also decision very, very consistent. So this is exactly what I say. By using this system, we can achieve the consistency. Uh, at the moment, we rely on human being, based upon the human being searching a database. But in future, the rule engines, the rule archive will be there. So just press a button, we get the information. So the decision maker, we get all that sort of information, uh, the menu as well as the, all the precedent cases before they come down to the final decision to say yes or no to your credit claim. So in other words, we make it very, very consistent. So this very important part of the system. Okay, and then finally, of course, administration. The system needs maintenance. So my staff will actually do the complete IPAC, you know, the IBM park sort of maintenance in future. Okay, now, before I go to some sort of demonstration, so it is a refresher about uh, the system. So this is the picture, all right? As I mentioned, you go into the system, right? do registration, you get a set of e-form, and then we give you a routing table, and then you go for island by island, you collect the stamp, and then once you get the stamp uh, given to you, that means the credit is approved, and then you go to the exit with that kind of information, with all the stamps there, you get the report, you get the certification, all right? Okay, let me give you some sort of, I mean, a uh, uh, top-level design. Uh, this is nothing new to you. It's uh, nothing strange to you because it's just a repeat, I would say, copy, you know, the existing system, but with some sort of enhancement using IT technology. So once you log in, you go into the system, you will see in future a dashboard. 
you very much like you're sitting in your car, you're driving, you can see that there's an oil gauge, and then your temperature gauge, you get a speed gauge, you get a machine revolution gauge, and so on, right? The air conditioning, radio, so you get, get everything in front of you. So that kind of information. In future, you will look at that. When you log on, you get information like that. And you have some sort of action needs. So say the system will prompt you. The prompt you say, look, the secretariat of the Beam Society already replied to you about your submission, right? Please address their concern or their query, or the BS already sent you some sort of message, please answer. So you have the action list. And also you can the reports, of course. There's something you're interested in. As we say, once you go through the whole thing, you gotta report it at the end of the day. Now you do the submission of the, of the project, and then you fill in the E form, and then you sub you put in the appendix, let's uh, say the layer two, layer three to the E form. And then you file your submittal, and then the system will validate, as I mentioned just now, uh, whether it's ready. Now, I always divide my process into uh, just a few stages. The first thing, when you submit the document to my staff, they actually conduct just one single thing, what I call the documentary readiness. They will say whether all the required information, document, regardless of the whether the content is good enough to justify the claim but just the document physically, whether they are complete or not. So this documentary completeness check is the first stage. And they go through what I call the technical readiness. This is say, my technical staff, what I call, right? Sometimes my, my subject officer, you know, for WU, EU, and so on. They look at your submittal. Regardless about, I would say, the, the contextual sufficiency of the information to convince the assessor that your project actually qualify or deserve that kind of credit, they look whether the information is the type of information, the type of information which is adequate for the BS to work on. So that is the second stage, technical readiness. And now when the document is technical ready, they ask the assessor to come in. Now if I may draw the analogy uh, by using examination. So the first thing is you submit your examination paper in the right book and the length is right. Let's say 5,000 words or 500 words. The second stage is we look at whether you're grammatically correct and whether there are any spelling mistake and very punctual punctuation mistake. Regardless of the context is good or not, regardless of that, all right? Or whether the style is good or not, we forget about that. So the second stage just about the checking of just I would say the grammatical correctness and also the spelling correctness. Now we go to the first stage, asking the BS. Now he is a professional or she's a professional look at the context and then decide whether the information is actually technically sufficient and technically robust to support your claim. So that is assessment. And then finally, of course, they go through the committee stage. They go through the assessment subcommittee. They, the committee, just like judges, they sit together, they look at your submittal and also the, the, the representation by the BAS and also my staff. Now, I always uh, actually ask my staff, I demand them to do it. This will say they should fight for the case of the applicant. Because within the committee room, we are the assessor, they may actually query. But my staff should actually give the good side of your story as well to the, the committee. So in other words, they actually have a 360 degree, all right? I would say the three dimensional information as regarding your project before they come down to decision. Of course, my staff will also serve the logistics. That would say, give the committee member, uh, I mean the full sight of all the precedents relevant to the case. But at the same time, they will try to give, I would say, the, the, the best light of your case to the committee. But in future, of course, because we have some sort of direct dialogue and so on and so forth, of course, that kind of thing could be done more by the applicant themselves. But at the same time, we, we are going to do it as well. So when you go through the whole thing, then we have the forms, the comments, and then you have some sort of discussions through the chat room, which I'm going to elaborate a little bit more uh, later in the subsequent slides. And then you have the final result. And sometimes you may have, for example, what we call a post CRC and so on, and then review, etc. Okay, okay, let's go back to, I would say, a simple diagrammatic representation of process on, on the higher level. So the stage one is for you to go to the Hong Kong GBC to do the project registration, and then you come over to BIM Society, you pay the money, and then you give the contract to us, you sign the contract, and now, when you go to the system, the system will give you one of the main user account. I give you a key to access to the system to actually submit your project. At the same time, at the moment, we can see we're going to give you eight keys, eight, eight number of keys, and so that you can distribute to your sub-account user. 
So altogether, we conceive you're going to nine people, all right, maximum, all right, to handle uh, the whole thing, you know, on the beam uh, submission process. Uh, if you think eight is not sufficient, then you can tell us you now why and also how many you think is the most appropriate one. At the moment, we are still flexible, but we actually asked the industry through the uh, engagement earlier. And the majority feedback, I think over 80%, they say, well, one plus eight is you know, all that you know, kind of account they actually require for one project, for one project. Oh, this uh, we, we actually, this system will give you the self-assessment. Remember, one of the concerns is the, the predictability. And now we try to improve the predictability. So once you go to the system, you can actually conduct a self-assessment. This will say, you, you tell the system, what are the credit you want to claim? And then you take the checkbox, and then you have some sort of what I call the big table. And the table will summing up and tells you what, how many credits you, 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 you can achieve. So this self-assessment. But now you have the e-form. And then you fill in the e-form according to actually what you actually in mind to claim. You fill in all the form, you press the button, the system will actually undergo what I call the documentary completeness test. So look at all the documents, whether the documents are already complete, right? That is actually sufficient to cover all the credits that you want to claim. So if you actually target to aim as platinum and 78 credits and so on and so forth, or 78 marks, but once you press a button, the form actually even take it to the highest. This will say we don't doubt about the context of your submission. We just say once you submit, we trust that you can do it. But then we give you the mark. But even we will get all the full marks, as you claim, based upon the form that you submitted, you may or may not get that kind of credit. So now you can actually right away do some sort of further sort of filling of the e-forms, information and so on, and then press the button again until you say, aha, no, if all the forms no, being accepted, if all the stamp being given, then at the end of the day, this is a credit that I, I can achieve. So the system will give you that kind of self-assessment at the early stage. So to make the whole thing, I would say, more predictable. All right, let me show you some example of this, the screen, all that kind of thing you will see in future. Uh, we actually copy you know, some other system, like for example, the e-tax system of the Hong Kong government. So you can actually fill in the tax return, but during the course of the, uh, the filling in process, suddenly you want to stop uh, for a while because you have something to do, for example, taking a dinner and so on. You can always save your result, and then you can come back afterwards and then resume again. So again, it's something like this. So you can see that here, for example, for MA, sort of claim forms, now some of them are 100% completed, but some of them are not. So until and unless all the forms are 100% completed, then you can go through the second stage. Otherwise, you just sort of some sort of iteration and going through it again and again until you complete all the forms. Now, this is not exactly the exact format of the screen that you're going to see in future, but this diagrammatic represents what actually in our mind. So in future, when you log on the system, you can see this is a screen, you can see that you know, we have some news for you, and then we have some sort of assessment to petitioner page. Uh, more important is this one. This will save your submission. So this site has been and so on. Suppose you're now entering data for the WU, and then once you press the tab here, WU, and then you can see there's some sort of menu right here. So you have the CWU, P1, P2, and so on and so forth. So you just get one by one, and then you fill in the form. So you fill in the form, right? Now this is another demonstration. We zoom in to the MA3. You can see that the form gives you some sort of details. Some of them are just sort of, I would say, the toggle switch. Whether you're yes and no, and so on, you fill it in. Now for some information, uh, once you take the checkbox, you need to support uh, support your claim by having some sort of supporting document. So here you have to attach your file. Uh, once you attach a file, we have predetermined the naming of each of the file that you attach to us. But we do not require you to change the naming nomenclature of your file to match our. You can still maintain yours, no problem. Once you go in, we will capture your file name, but at the same time, we will preface your file name with our file name. So when we talk about your file over the phone, we can always either using your file reference or our file reference at the same time. So in other words, we do not require you to do another, I would say, modification of filing system and so on. We just accept any file name we submit. But once you go in the system, that will attach to our file name, name nomenclature. 
but this is something you have to submit it to support your claim. Uh, one thing I want to announce in, in advance is we are going to make our system BIM uh, compatible, but not yet at this stage, not before, for example, the middle of next year. No, because the time, I think, is too tight for us to do everything. Uh, I, I always try to draw an analogy about our system by actually comparing our system with, I would say, the peer, you know, that kind of, for example, terminal. Uh, your information is carried by your ships. The ship you go to our terminal. So we have two types of terminal. One is actually for the, the cargo. The whole actually, uh, I would say, scattered cargo. And other one is for what we call the container. So the BIM, I always say something like a container. So information already there within your BIM system. Now in future, we try to save your trouble to extract the data from BIM manually and then using manual process and then fill in the forms again. So in our dream, it's very simple. Once you put the data or information in your system for some purpose, if that piece of information is going to be required for the BIM submission, we want to save your trouble from actually repeating the entry. So we try to build something which can actually automatically extract the information and pass it <coughs> into our system. So this is what I call the BIM compatible. It's very much like a ship you know, with all sorts of container. The container can actually load it on the floor, on the ground, on the pier, and then the machine will actually take out you know, the, the context of the container, uh, container uh, from, well, from within and then pass it into our system. But at the same time, of course, some information may not be in the beam, and then you have to use that kind of cargo, small cargo, and then put it on our shore, and then we are going to take it as well, and then two things merge together and then fill in to the E4. So this is what we conceive. All right. Now, once you submit you know, the information, of course, you go through the assessment process. As I mentioned just now, uh, it's something, uh, this is what we call attainable. This is say if you want to, to, to uh, attempt for that kind of credit, this is all the credit which is attainable if you want to attain 100%. And some of them will subject to site audit. Now, don't worry. People say, look at the word audit, now. you're jumping up. Before we are auditing, we are going to consult the industry to make sure our auditing system, again, is user-friendly and reasonable. And you may ask, why audit? Why not just based upon the paper for a number of reasons? Number one, we really want to have some sort of verification. Number one, remember, after we use the report, the BD will take it right, as it is and then give you the 10% GFA concession. We have to make sure you know, what you claim you know, is actually what you actually built on the site. So what I call it, I say you walk, your talk, not just the lip surface, but the actual one. But we do not use very extensive auditing system in future, just a simple audit. And number two, for your benefit. And many people mention, you know, a picture worth more than a thousand words. And then likewise, seeing is believing. So once we ask you some sort of question, the easier way to find it, whether it's right or not, or right or true or false, you just go to see the site to look at that. Once you see it, it saves all the trouble of a lot of tons of tons of paper of submissions. So in other words, the audit is for your benefit at the end of the day. But meanwhile, don't worry. It's not something we are going to roll out just like that without consultation. Now, this is a credit, the, the green one is a credit that you attempt through the self-assessment process I mentioned just now. But this one is actually the, the form you submitted. So in other words, you may try to attempt 78. But the form you submit, even take it to the highest. That's to say we take all the forms as if it is 100%, no problem. But at the end, even based upon that the form, you may not get 78. You may get 69 and so on. And of course, one final one is approved, the final result. Okay, in the stage three, the process assessment process go through more or less the same as it is. But of course, you know, at the moment, we go through email, telephone, and so on. In future, everything will be going through the platform the IBM platform as a sort of collaboration platform on the assessment. So we have the assessment and checking with the BS assignment and then with the online communication we are longing for and also the knowledge base. As I mentioned just now, the knowledge base actually is two actually two way sort of purpose. Number one is being a server, they give us information for us to make decision. At the end of the day we contribute to the database. We actually enrich the knowledge base at the end. Now these are the parties involved in the uh, process, the applicant, you most of the time, the BAS, the expert panels, and also the BSL staff and so on. Okay, again, this is a very simple process. Uh, we're more, more or less like what we are doing. 
but now again using the E form and also the IBIM system. So you can see that we have to review the review e-form by the BAS and then comment on the submittal and then you revise the submission and then we review again, we give comments and then finally we have the decision made by the expert panel and also made by the assessment subcommittee and then if you actually are lucky enough, I would say not lucky, most of the time we give you that kind of luck. We are going to give you what we call the public CRC review to give you the final chance of salvation, the final chance of actually salvage, the, the, the credit you might lose. So give a final chance of clarification so that you may actually retain or re regain the credits. So uh, and then we have the post CLC and so on. All right. Okay. Uh, in the system, I said that we are going to give you some sort of online communication. Uh, this is sort of system we conceive. It's very much like, I would say, the chat group of WhatsApp and WeChat and so on. It's something like that in future. Uh, we have a different sort of media communication. The most direct and real time, of course, is telephone. But is going to be used again in future you know, for a quick sort of exchange and so on. But as long as the assessment process is concerned, we actually want all the information which is important uh, and also significant for your claim or either to decline your claim or actually give you the claim, they are all captured in the system. Now this kind of system as you see on the right hand side is very much like the WhatsApp uh, chat group. So the different parties, the BAS, the applicants, the expert panel and so on, we can open that kind of chat group. And so therefore you can have some sort of direct sort of argument and I would say support, exchange, discussion and deliberation and so on. And before uh, uh, the final decision is being reached. So you can see that we have on the left hand side bottom with the applicant, with the BSL and the BS. Uh, why the BS is sitting in the middle? It's very simple. Uh, you know that the one of the reasons why we do not allow you to have a direct contact between the applicant, that is you, in most instances, and the BS is because we try to avoid embarrassment and also we try to maintain high degree of integrity. Now remember, the BAS could be someone coming from the industry, not from the BSL, but from you. So in other words, your friend sitting by your side, working in another consultant firm, could be a BAS assessing your project when he is drinking coffee with you. And we require him to keep his identity 100% actually secret, not to tell anybody. Uh, number one, to protect the system integrity, protect the result integrity, but at the same time to protect you and also the applicant, to avoid that kind of embarrassment between the two parties, so that the result could be totally impartial, totally objective, totally professional. And because of that, even we allow some sort of direct dialogue, like what I saw as a chat quote, but there is some sort of risk, that's to say, the BAS could actually, by saying something, actually disclose his own identity. So in future, we are going to have the BS sitting in the middle, so there's some sort of time lag. When the BS says something, it actually go through the BSL. Our secretary staff look at that. If there's no risk, no risk of exposure of his identity and so on, or embarrassment, he just press a button and it will go in the chat room. So in other words, it's not totally that kind of direct, but slightly indirect. But on the other hand, if the project is going to assess by in-house BAS, it's different. Because in-house DAS, I think in future, we are quite ready and prepared to actually to have direct dialogue between the BAS through the chat group with all the parties, including the applicants. Okay, I think I mentioned sufficient on the knowledge base, but now using the slide, I want to demonstrate in future, what could you see? Now you can see that in future, now we try to build some sort of hyperlink, and I also build what I call the data dictionary. So the term, the technical term used in my manual in future will be actually an entry in the database, which I call the uh, data dictionary. So people can actually go to data dictionary, look at that particular work, and then you know exactly what is the meaning you know, as all right, used in the context of the beam assessment, rather than just a daily sort of, I mean, a common understanding, because sometimes they carry some sort of meaning, just like, for example, for physics, momentum means something, right? force, fox and so on. So that kind of research terms in future, you will find that we have data dictionary and the system will actually enable you to find out meaning so much easier. All right, so look at the table again. So uh, the same table, but you can see that you are quite lucky for this particular project. So they aim high, but eventually they actually get all the results they want. But on the other hand, the second part is not so lucky because it actually compiles everything but now, when you go through the site audit at the end of the day, this one is not actually 
I would say substantiatable. Under that situation, of course, drop the patium back to go, and so on. So for this one, eventually got that kind of result, right? So what what you actually try to uh, uh, aim at, right? And then after the site visit, uh, auditing, and so on, and after we look at the credit submitted, actually get this final result. Okay, reporting uh, now is a very laborious process. As I mentioned earlier, uh, my staff need to actually look at their, all the past record and try to extract the information manually into a report. In future, we are going to use a system to automate generate. So my, my staff and even you can indicate what kind of information need to actually include in the final report. So we put the indicator there. So when we put a nail, for example, indicate this is something they need to actually transport to a certain position report the system will actually complete the whole process so the benefit is number one very efficient very effective number two very verbatim, verbatim. so we try to carry original wording into the final one with this actually manipulation by human being of course some final editing to make it readable is still necessary but anyway the report will be i would say more, more and more true and verbatim at the end apart from the efficiency gain. All right, so stage five, of course, is certification. Very simple. All right, so this is again an overview of the process in future, uh, which is nothing new to you, as I mentioned. It's more or less, I would say, digitizations of the uh, manual system at the moment. And the user management, uh, in future, we are going to give you a lot of, I would say, uh, uh, convenience too. Uh, you have the notification of tasks when you log in system you know what kind of tasks are waiting for your action and we can serve you reminder when the deadline is drawing near uh, whether to my staff and to you and so on and then we have the calendar in the calendar you can see that where is the milestone for your particular project and when does it go through the asc and so on and of course uh, we allow user registration and also the user account i want to elaborate a bit on the e-leaf management uh, when my staff is on leave i will make sure that even any one of my actually uh, resource, human resources take leave, your request will be taken care of. So the system will actually allow that kind of forwarding. So for example, if Mr. A handing a WU is on leave for the next two days, then he is actually assessed right and also his responsibility will be tran transferred to another staff. So to you is transparent. It looks as if nobody is actually on leave because someone will actually address actually your question anyway and finally on this left hand side a notice board because from time to time we want to draw your attention for example the system is going to be closed or the deadline is joined near where uh, the new technical circular is being issued and something like that and there are some sort of supporting functions as well as i mentioned the hong kong gpc interface and also the search engine you try to search the information the online data dictionary and also the online reports and also discussion forum and so on. And the administration function is the maintenance of e-form. <clears throat> I can imagine in future, uh, even after the release of the e-form, no matter how good it is, because the changing of the regulatory requirements, changing of the BD requirements, so on and so forth, from time to time, we actually change uh, the context of the form, change the requirement. So therefore, the form needs to be changed. And also, we have the BS module, uh, and the finance module, the PD5 workflow, system setting, and so on so and so forth. So in other words, the whole thing, uh, some of them is on the surface that you see, that you experience. Some of them actually below the surface. It's only actually managed by us, but then we manage the system well to serve you better. This is what you say. All right, the benefit we're going to generate is, I hope after, uh, the, the, I would say the past 60 minutes of elaboration, now you agree with me, you know, the system is going to bring the following benefits. We are going to make the whole thing more user-friendly, and more efficient, more transparent, and also the system are always available, and it's all seasonal available, seven days a, a week, 24 hours a day, and also data only need to be entered once, and they can actually use many, many times in the system without repeating the entry and so on. And also we try to ensure <coughs> and also maintain and enhance the certainty and consistency by using the standard e-form, and we have consistent ruling because with the knowledge base now, which is so easy uh, to actually get reference to. And we also enhance the communication, uh, the communication mode, which is not possible at the moment, will become so possible, and I would say so convenient and so commonplace after we install the system. And then we can actually strengthen the uh, process integrity 
which make the whole system fair to everybody and also make the government and the ICAC some sort of peace of mind, of course, and also make sure that our board of directors and the management and the staff, uh, the governance and so on, they all have the peace of mind. This is something that we want to achieve. Okay, now I seek your help. Uh, because I believe we designed and built for you, and actually for you in our mind, and also actually it is built for you at the end of the day, so now we will invite your views, your comments, and also your contribution. And we also try to invite you to, form, to join some of our focus group. So we divide our work in module, right? And for each module, we want to form some sort of focus consultation group. So apart from the student engagement, which could only be held, for example, once in one or two months only, right? But now the focus group, because it's a smaller number of consultees, we can always try to call you and try to find out your views. So it's time for you to influence us and also time for you to actually build the system that you are going to use every day. So please join our focus group. So uh, with that, uh, I'm, I, I come to the end of my presentation. As I mentioned, it is a remix of the webinar we uh, held on the 10th of June. So the context is more the same, except some more demonstration you know, during the, the webinar. But we try to condense it to make it, I would say, more consumable, uh, given that you're so busy. So this is the end. So I hope I will see you very soon uh, in another student engagement session, face to face. And hopefully we will soon be uh, taken off our face. We can talk to each other, close to each other, and so on. OK, meanwhile, I hope you can uh, stay healthy and make sure you wear masks all the time, all right? Uh, remain healthy, and so on. Okay, goodbye. Bye-bye.